Hello and welcome back to the Lemmings Panic YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be installing Debian in the form of Linux Mint on a USB stick as a mobile operating system. This, uh, this video was inspired by channel member Mislav, who commented on a previous video suggesting that we do this. So you know what? We'll give it a try. But before we proceed any further into the video, I would like to indeed thank that channel member Mislav for being a channel member, they get early access to videos such as this one like right here a badge next to the name on both comments and live streams and priority response to comments as their comments get sent to my phone first anyway, let's get into the video we have here uh, Debian, oh not Debian we do have here Debian in the form of Linux Mint um, if I sound weird and brain goes off track it's just because I have a migraine I have a migraine and this migraine is not fun at all. So, first thing first, I've just got to turn that down to there. We'll get cracking. So, we have here our operating system. It's just a live one. So, first thing we need to do is grab this USB stick and plug it in. Now that we've done that, as you can see here, it shows up as 3.5, 5.3 megabyte volume. Uh, we will ignore what that says. We will start the installation process. So, uh, this may look like it's being janky. Um, don't worry about it. Just the capture card's being weird, and I'm not entirely sure as to why it's being weird. So for networking, we have on here, uh, we're going with wired instead of wireless, uh, even though the wired switch is, or the wireless switch is turned on. So what we have here is we have our release notes if we want to wish them, if we wish to want them, which we don't. Yes, my brain is super limited. Uh, we have English UK, as this is a English UK setup. I'm just going to turn them lock on. So if I just Yeah, you can see that. So we do not want to install multimedia codecs. And we've got to be careful with how we do this because this may or may not ask where we want to install it. Um I did I was gonna try this with Yes, yes, that is yes. Uh, sorry, I was just having a brain moment there. So I I was going to do this with Ubuntu instead. However, um, the USB stick that I'm using as the install media is only four gigs in size. And for some reason unbeknownst to me, Ubuntu is greater than 4 gigs in size. The I, the installer ISO is greater than 4 gigs in size. But things like Debian isn't. I did try Debian, but I just wanted to install straight onto the system, which I didn't want to do. So as we can see here, we have two choices. We have either our verbatim store and go, or our the drive, the drive that's actually on here. I want the verbatim store and go, which is the other, other USB stick that I just plugged in because this will be a mobile operating system and we will show it off uh, yes we want to go through that process so this will be limited by the write speed of USB 2 because this only has USB 2 so what we're just going to do is we're just going to call it store computer name um, mobile so we'll just call it uh, Linux Panic Mobile, then we just call LPM. And then require password at login, continue. So the reason why we do that for is because this is a mobile USB stick, anything that we do on this USB stick, we don't want to expose to the wild as it were. So, well, 
it'll be accessible if you know what you're doing. But to know what you're doing and then also get access to it in a meaningful way is two different things. Now, as we can see here, it's just going through and creating a, a ext4 file system on here. I'll tell you what, if we actually open Gparted, we should be able to actually be able to see it in progress. Now, bearing in mind, it is running off of one USB stick, installing onto another USB stick. Now, this will take time, as mentioned, based off of your speed, hardware, and all that jazz. But this is writing from USB 2 to USB, USB 3, technically. Well, it is writing to USB 3. However, it is, it is limited by the USB 2 speeds because no USB 3. Hell, this has Firewire. Which I find funny. Sorry, it has 1394. I, I triple 1394, which is Firewire. However, getting to see that is another matter entirely. But here we are. As you can see here, unknown uh, boot and tag, which means it is currently going through and actually installing it, which is good. Now, this is, again, limited by operating system. So we'll just give it a pause and continue when we're a bit further along in the process. Okay, so this is now progressing a bit further on. We are now to the point of copying files. This is taking another minute, well, another three, four minutes. So again, this is, I'm going to keep pausing and updating as and when. Uh, I know it's a change just because I don't want to have this video be 70 billion minutes long. So we will return. So this is a bit further along in the process. Okay, we're now at the part of where it's now installing the system. This took about 20 minutes to get there. Bearing in mind it's copying files from one USB stick to another over USB 2 speeds. So, yeah, this, this is going to take a while. We'll be back once we have progressed a bit further. So that's, this is just now finished uh, downloading uh, image packs. Well, not, not image packs, language packs, sorry. It's now going through the process of download, well, unpacking the various software packages that have been copied across to the USB stick. And it is now installing them. Now it is running off of one USB stick and the speed of the CPU as the install process on the second USB stick has now begun. So we are now going through the process of where it's configuring hardware. This will not be valid upon me plugging this USB stick anywhere else, but it's just general. It does it with every operating system. Uh, it is generating the boot image as needed. So it's now getting through the final stages of the process. And now we just have to sit and wait for it to continue. Okay, so we're now even further along in the process. This is now going through the process of removing packages that are no longer needed for the install process. And it is just lightening up the installer. And now we have finished the installation process. So we got a choice, we continue with the installation, we can continue testing or we can reboot. We're going to have one little, one final hurrah, shall we say. So now we've got our fully installed system. We have our live USB and our installed USB. What we're going to do is we're going to open up our file manager, well, the file manager. I say once it decides it wants to cooperate there we go and I want to figure out there we go so our 32 gig volume which will be the second USB stick it would be nice if you know we'll do that later I was going to I was going to show you how to change grub background, but I'll uh, leave that for another video. So it's just being a little bit upset. So what we're going to do is we're going to go good night to you. Unplug this USB stick, and this USB stick here is the 
um, install a USB. Nice metallic, and I love the feel in my hand. So, what we're going to do now is plug back in the power. We're going to turn on. As you can see here, it is turning on. I have this set up in such a way that you can see the screen and also the screen. Um, this is set to boot from USB uh, straight off the bat. Instead of go to hard disk first. So, as we now know that the USB is actually also an operating system, a installed operating system, what we have to do now is just sit and wait for it to wake up, wait for it to start working. So, what we're going to do is we're going to stick a straw in our can, wait for the operating system to wake up. So, here we are. We have our Linux Mint operating system. Bearing in mind, this USB stick here was the one that was plugged in. And we should only see a 30 gig or 32 gig total operating system size. Well, disk size, not operating system size. Now, if you remember, I called this um, LPM or Linux Panic Mobile, and here we are, Linux Panic. Ah. There we go. Linux Panic Mobile, top left-hand side. So, first things first is we log in. There we go. So, that is on our USB stick, and I, what I will do is I will show you this once this has decided it wants to wake up. Please wake up faster. So, going to change some display settings right quick. Uh, mirror, apply. There we go. So you can see what I can see. So, like that. And what we have is welcome to Linux Mint. Go, do not show this dialogue at startup. Blah blah blah. So we have everything here if we wanted to. But the key thing here is we open, you know, G parted. So if we open up disks, you can see we have our verbatim store and go, which has this operating system on it. This 320 gig system here is our, there we go, is our uh, OpenBSD system. As you can see here, it's all of these and that's all right. As we can see here, partition type OpenBSD. So one final thing to do as is the obligatory is to do sudo install the fetch. Ooh, I like that. So, as we can see, Neofetch is already installed. So, Neofetch. Gonna make this a bit bigger. And as we can see here, we're after the races already. So, it works. It's alive. It's fantastic. It's easy to just tag out, plug in, tag out, plug in, tag out, plug in. Changes, changes, and um, as often or as infrequently as we like and that is wonderful anyway i hope you liked the video if you liked the video hit the like button if you dislike it hit the dislike they both seem to work even though you can only see one of them remember my kernels when you use linux or any when you use nix don't panic i have been nick you have been amazing and i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day goodbye